In today's video, we're taking a look at Reolink's doorbell lineup to find out how well they perform, what the key differences are, and which one might be right for you, especially if you're a Home Assistant user. Check it out. Over the last couple of years, I've tested a ridiculous number of different smart doorbells, from ultra budget ones right up to top tier ones, but the one that's always stayed permanently installed for me at my front door is the Reolink doorbell. For me, this doorbell is the only one that's consistently hit all the right notes in terms of image quality, detection, local storage, smart features, and the price. In fact, I even like it so much that I actually purchased an additional one for my workshop, and you might be thinking, why do you need a doorbell for your workshop? And the answer is, I don't really know. Well, actually, I do know the reason that I put it on there was so that I had a place to test doorbells and not have to keep taking off my front doorbell, but that's one for another day. Reolink's current doorbell lineup consists of three different models, all of which have got different price points. First off, we've got the PoE doorbell, which usually sits at around $89.99. We've then got the Wi-Fi version, which is usually around $99.99, and it's often discounted to around $84.99. And we've then got the third option, which is a newcomer to the doorbell lineup, and that's the battery doorbell, and this one retails for around $119.99. All three doorbells come in both a black and white variant, and they all adopt this very clean and minimalistic look, without being too big and bulky, and they don't have a big horrible plasticky design. If you compare Reolink's doorbell to some of the other doorbells that are currently on the market, then these doorbells are relatively quite slim. If you take a look at the PoE and Wi-Fi model side by side, then they're pretty much indistinguishable without flipping them over. The battery powered doorbell though is a different story. While it still maintains that original design, it's much taller and it's got a much longer faceplate covering and it also has a much larger button. While all three doorbells do have a clean design, they do all feature that Reolink branding on the front, so if you're somebody that doesn't like having brands displayed, then this is quite prominent on the front. So that's what the doorbells look like, but what does it look like to actually look through the doorbell? All models have excellent clarity with things like 2K resolution, night vision and HDR support. And I think this is where Reolink have done something a bit interesting and possibly a bit different and also maybe confusing because although they all do support 2K resolution, the way that the different models handle it is all a little bit different. For example, the PoE and Wi-Fi models have different aspect ratios and different resolutions, depending on if you buy the black version or the white version. If you pick up the black version, it's got a 5 megapixel sensor with a resolution of 2560 by 1920, which gives you a much wider 4x3 image. If you pick up the white variant, it's got a 5 megapixel sensor with a resolution of 1920 by 2560, which is going to give you a much taller 3x4 portrait style view. Although the differences between these two aspect ratios isn't huge, that change actually might make the difference between which one you buy. Maybe you might want the wider one so you've got more view of your drive, or maybe you might want the taller one because you've got a narrower front door and you just want to be able to see more of the person and be able to see what's at their feet, maybe if they're carrying a parcel or something like that. There are a couple of other smaller differences between the PoE and Wi-Fi doorbells, but we'll touch on those more in just a sec. So what about the battery doorbell? Well, the battery doorbell also has a totally different field of view. The battery model's got a 4 megapixel sensor with a squared resolution of 2048 by 2048, and this is going to give you a 150 degree field of view, which basically gives you a one to one symmetrical image, which will capture both the full body and also any packages in view. So, if you wanted one that does the whole thing, where it gives you a nice clean image and gives you a nice top to bottom and also a bit on the sides, then maybe the battery doorbell's for you. The battery doorbell does also come in both the white and black versions, but these two versions are the same, there's no difference in resolution with these different colour options. All three models all support HDR, but in my testing I found that the HDR performance on the battery camera was much better than that of the Wi-Fi version. On my Wi-Fi camera it seemed that whenever HDR was on, everything seemed to be a bit blown out and everything was a bit overexposed. This isn't always the case, and sometimes the HDR image just look much better, but this is going to be down to personal preference. In the settings, you can modify and adjust this as you want. You can adjust the image brightness, you can set the HDR to be auto if you want, and there are a few other image settings you can change. 
As well as the difference between the aspect ratio and the resolution, there is also a difference between the way that the images are presented with those of the Wi-Fi and PoE model compared to the battery model. With the Wi-Fi and PoE doorbells, the image that you see is just a standard flat image, but with the battery camera, it's got kind of a fisheye vignette effect around the edges. I think the whole fisheye vignette effect looks quite good on this camera and it's not something that would put me off but it is something to be aware of if this is a camera that you're considering getting. Reolink have also included their time lapse feature which is available across lots of Reolink's cameras and it's available on all three doorbell models. I'm not really sure why you'd take time lapses on your doorbell but it's a cool additional feature to just have. Each of the three doorbells come with two different mounting plates. There's this standard flat plate which you can use to have the doorbell look straight forwards. Then there's also this angled wedge which you can use to have the doorbell look in a set direction. For my workshop setup, I'm making use of the flat plate just so I can have the camera looking forwards. But on my front door, I'm making use of that angled wedge so that I can have the camera directed towards my post box. Next up, we've got smart detection. Reolink's done a great job added smart detection features to all of these different doorbells and best of all it's done all of this without any kind of cloud subscription. Between the three different camera models there are a couple of differences between them in terms of what smart features are available but they are really slight changes. With the black version of the Wi-Fi model this one only supports person detection. With the white version of the PoE and Wi-Fi model, this one supports both person and package detection. And with the battery camera, this one supports both person, package and also vehicle detection. Inside the Reolink app, you've got full access to all of the different detection settings and you can fine tune things like the motion sensitivity, object size filters, alarm settings, motion marking, detection zones, recording schedules and a whole bunch of other things. This tweaking and adjustment allow you to customise the doorbell to have the preferences and settings that you want. Setting up the detection for things like person and motion work really well inside of the app and so does also the opposite for marking areas that you don't want to be alerted about. One of the things that I think needs a bit more work and could be tidied up and adjusted a bit more is the package detection. For me when I tested out package detection on the battery doorbell it worked but it didn't always work and it wasn't something that I found to be super accurate. For me personally though, this isn't a feature that I actually want or would use just because I've got an inbuilt post box, but if this is something that you wanted and something that you're going to use, you might need to spend a bit more time actually fine tuning it because it's not as accurate and reliable as the things like person and motion. Let's talk power then. Of the three different models, obviously the simplest and easiest to set up is the battery powered one because it runs on an internal battery. You can simply just attach the mounting plate to the wall and you're good to go. On the back of the battery power doorbell you're going to find a USB-C port and this can be used to charge up its 7000 mAh battery which I believe is rated to be around 5 months of usage but again your mileage and usage is going to differ depending on how you actually use it and also the space that it's set up in. It's also worth noting that the battery inside of the battery version isn't removable. As well as being able to charge the battery power doorbell using a USB-C port, there is also screw terminals on the back and you can actually connect this up to your existing doorbell wiring and what this will do is it will actually trickle charge the device so it will always stay powered and you won't have to worry about constantly taking it off and charging it. Next we've got the PoE model. With this one it's powered by Ethernet so a single cable handles the job of providing both power and network and with this one the install is really clean, it's just reliant on you actually having some network cable right where your doorbell wiring is going to go. The Wi-Fi version can be connected to either a 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network and it does need to be hardwired to your existing doorbell power. The Wi-Fi version's also got an Ethernet port on the back, so if you do have network close by and you are able to connect this up, this will make it a lot more reliable and make it load much faster. Continuing on, and we've got connectivity and smart chime support. The Wi-Fi model and the battery powered model both support 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi networks, whereas the PoE model only supports PoE. All three models work with a variety of different chimes and different smart home devices, including the Reolink Chime, the Reolink Hub, Mechanical Chimes, Google Assistant, Amazon Echo and Home Assistant. The Reolink Chime comes bundled with the PoE and Wi-Fi models but it's going to be a separate purchase if you're picking up the battery model. The Chime is a little plug-in device that connects to your doorbell using RF and it plays a tone whenever the doorbell rings. 
You can customize the volume and the sound effect of the chime using the Reolink app or by physically pressing the buttons on the chime. And if you're making use of a newer version of the chime, which is the V2, then you can actually make use of the chime within Home Assistant and you can use Home Assistant to send commands to the chime. If you've already got a mechanical chime installed, then you can actually reuse this with the Reolink doorbell so that when you press the doorbell button, that same mechanical chime continues to work. It is worth noting though that not all mechanical chimes work with the doorbell so you'd have to check your specific mechanical chime with the Reolink instructions. The Reolink chime and obviously the mechanical chime are both optional things, you don't have to make use of these. If you've got smart home speakers in your home like the Amazon Echo and Google Assistant then you can actually connect these to your Reolink account and you can make use of those speakers to play a chime sound so whenever the doorbell rings it's going to play across any of these smart speakers that you've got. Someone is at the workshop doorbell. This also works with devices that have got displays, so things like the Amazon Echo Show and Google Nest Display. You can actually use these screens to view what's on the cameras, and you can even make use of the two way live communication. One of the reasons that I rate Reolink so highly is because there's no cloud nonsense. When you buy a product from them, it's yours, and it's yours to do with what you want. There's no hidden fees or any kind of subscriptions, but if you were somebody that did want a cloud subscription, you wanted to be able to store your recordings and clips and whatever else all in the cloud, then Reolink do provide this as a service, so it's something that you could have if you wanted, but it's optional. With pretty much all of Reolink's cameras and not just these doorbells, they actually give you lots of different ways that you can store your own recordings and store the data and use the data how you want. With these doorbells, all three models support micro SD cards of up to 256GB and the micro SD card sits just on the back of the device. If you own one of Reolink's NVRs, then you can actually save the recordings straight from the Wi-Fi and PoE models straight onto the NVR. And if you don't own an NVR but you've got your own file store or system that you can record to, then you can actually enable the FTP connection and you can store those recordings using FTP. If you don't own either of those things and you don't fancy saving everything straight onto the micro SD card, then you can pick up Reolink's Home Hub. The Reolink Home Hub allows you to have cameras save the data directly to the hub, and this is useful if you're making use of the doorbell because if somebody was to steal that doorbell, then they're going to steal your micro SD card as well. But if you're making use of the Home Hub, the doorbell would be recording to the hub, so they'd need to steal that hub as well. With the Reolink Home Hub, there's basically two different versions. There's a cheap version and there's a pro version. The main difference between them is the amount of cameras that they support. With the cheaper version, it supports up to eight Reolink cameras, and this might be useful if you've got just a couple of cameras that you want to record, and again, have that whole security thing where no one can just steal the camera. With the cheaper one, it only supports recording to an SD card, and the pro version actually has a two terabyte HDD, so you've got more data and a lot more reliability because it's being written to a drive rather than a card. The other thing that the Pro version does is it supports up to 24 cameras, so if you've got lots of Reolink cameras then this might be a good option for you. Okay, let's talk Home Assistant. You may have seen recently that Reolink joined the Works with Home Assistant program, and this is basically an official certification that means individual Reolink devices have undergone some testing which ensures compatibility with Home Assistant. It also means Reolink is now able to make use of the Works with Home Assistant badge and this can be displayed on all of the different products that have achieved this certification. One of the really nice things about this is if you pick up a Reolink product and you see that little badge on it or you look at it on the website and it's got that badge then you can buy it with confidence knowing that it's going to work with your Home Assistant setup. It's also worth noting that the Reolink integration for Home Assistant is a platinum integration and this is the highest level that an integration can actually be. So it's going to give you full access to all of the different controls, features, pretty much anything you can do in the app you're able to do with Home Assistant integration. And there's not many integrations in Home Assistant that give you as much control as what the Reolink one does. All three models of the doorbell all work with Home Assistant but there is a small caveat. With the PoE and Wi-Fi models, you can add these straight into Home Assistant without any additional hardware, but to make use of the battery-powered model, you will also need to have one of Reolink's home hubs. You can make use of either the standard or pro hub, and this will work. All you need to do is just connect the battery-powered model to the hub, and then the hub will be discovered as a device, and then you can make use of all the different sensors and controls and view the feeds and do all of that good stuff. We already saw earlier that Home Assistant could be used to trigger the doorbell chime, but there is also some additional functionality. 
The chime will show up as a device and it will allow you to do things like turn on and off its front LED and also set the different ringtones for the various events. The final option that you've got with the chime is also to be able to adjust its volume. In the integration, if you select your doorbell, you'll have full control over things like adjusting the sensitivity, turning on and off controls, and also viewing its different sensors. Some of the useful doorbell sensors are things like the person and visitor sensors. The person sensor activates if a doorbell thinks it can see somebody, and the visitor sensor activates when somebody physically presses the doorbell button. With the doorbell, you've also got full access to its live streams, and activating the live stream will also play the live stream sound as well as the live video. Inside of the live stream, you're also able to take snapshots, and you can also use an action to take snapshots as well. Okay, let's wrap this up then with my final thoughts. I think all three of these doorbells all look great and they've all got a great feature set, but for me, my personal go to would still be the Wi Fi version in black. I'm personally not too bothered about some of the missing features like package detection and vehicle detection just because they're not something that my doorbell looks at and my doorbell points at my post box so I see the parcels go into there and that's kind of that's all I care about with mine. If I could add some features to the doorbell in the future I'd like to see Reolink release a doorbell with features like some of the ones that Akara have with the local person detection and local facial recognition. That way you could make use of these within your automations and I'm pretty sure Reolink would do a really good job with actually exposing that information to Home Assistant so we'd have some really cool doorbells that could do some really cool things and use Home Assistant. But there we go guys, that's been a little look at Reolink's doorbell range. If you've enjoyed this video or found it interesting then don't forget to drop me a like and if you aren't already hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.